hey, hey, beautiful people. You know who you are. Welcome back to Mondays with Mondanay. This is where we dig deep into love, life, and liberty, and of course, democracy. This is where we ask hard questions, and as always, we keep it real. Today's episode is titled, Oh, Say Can We See? All right, there's another version that said, Oh, say, now, you remember that one with the living in America? I remembered it until I, just a minute ago. But uh, it's time that we open our eyes and take a good long look at what's really going on in this country. Now, I know a lot of you are still shocked, stunned, horrified, mystified even. Uh, We just witnessed something unbelievable. The re-election of an incumbent president despite criminal indictments and endless catastrophes, and and, and with both houses now in his favor? My beloved, this wasn't just a victory. It was a statement. But a lot of us are left asking, how? Somebody lying. How did we get here? Don't nobody know. It feels like deja vu, like we've seen this play out uh, before, and still somehow we missed the warning signs. Let's talk about one of the most overlooked aspects of this outcome. The United States Census. Yes, you heard me. The census during the 2020 census, uh, uh, many marginalized communities that are often called the hard to count were underrepresented. And that left the door wide open for gerrymandering and redistricting and all that evil, which I'm calling the good to the guy. This wasn't just an oversight. It was an opportunity to reshape our democratic, our democratic landscape into a way that silences some of our voices and amplifies the others. The others. But beyond census data and voting maps, we, we, we have to ask ourselves something deeper. Who are the people casting these votes? Who are the ones silently keeping secure this kind of victory, yet expressing horror and concern over the results? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And let's be honest with ourselves. Do we really know where we stand with one another? This isn't just a question of political allegiance. It's about whether we can still trust each other as a society. Can we really build healthy, strong communities when we're so divided, even secretly? I know these are hard questions, but family, if we don't start somewhere, we're never going to get there. And that somewhere begins with honest dialogue. We need to find out why people voted the way that they did, especially those who hide it. We don't have to agree, but we have to try to understand We have to talk like family. Because when the rubber meets the road, here's the truth. Whether we like it or not, we are family. Us, 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 all of us. This whole country is one household, and a house divided against itself cannot stand. We cannot keep separating into smaller and smaller boxes, isolating ourselves, and pretending that the other side doesn't exist. We need each other more now than we ever have. And we need to find the common ground that makes us bigger, bolder, and better as a nation. I'm an American, damn it, and I'm proud to be an American. And this is a clearing call for all American Folks, we are the unsettling force. The force that Dr. King envisioned. We are the voices that can uh, come together to rise against injustice, not just for one group, but for everybody. This isn't about tearing down, it's about building up. It's about becoming the force that speaks truth, that demands justice, and that stands as one against division. So here's my question for you. Are you ready to see each other? Are you ready to talk, listen, and act? Because if we don't do this together, we'll lose the very soul of our democracy.
And that's something I know we can't afford, people. We're going to talk about three ways to start all the conversations, and, and, and we're going to talk about places that they can be heard. Listen, community conversations need to start happening by, by organizing small local gatherings in your communities. Reach out to a diverse group, neighbors, friends, coworkers, and even those with opposing views. Keep it respectful and rooted in curiosity. Don't let it, it, it kills the cat, but not the person. Remember, you're not the creature, you're the creator. Ask questions like, what motivates you to vote the way you do, whatever way you vote? Or what concerns do you have about our country's direction? You'd be surprised at the perspectives that come forward when people feel safe to share. If you don't want to get close to people, there are online forums and local platforms that we can find. I, I didn't do all that research, but uh, there, there's some like next door, okay, or Facebook community groups can be great spaces for respectful dialogue. Well, I don't know if it gets anyway. L look for local chapters of discussion groups like living room conversations. Are braver angels, organizations uh, that are dedicated to depolarizing conversations across the U.S. Uh, create a safe space for questions and reflecting on today's pressing issues without judgment. I know it's hard to do, but we can do it. That, that the public libraries and community centers, libraries and community centers host discussion forums all the time. And they're open to the community. And they are community-led workshops. Consider proposing a community dialogue, a series where people from all backgrounds come together to talk about the impacts of what's happening currently in our policies, the power of voting, and what it means to be a part of a democratic society. Libraries and community centers are welcoming neutral grounds. And I think it's a pretty good space for these kind of dialogues. So let's take action, family. Or they say, let's take, take, let's take action, fam. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see each other. Let's start these conversations and let's show up in spaces where we can hear and be heard. And remember, it's when we stir from the bottom that everybody rises. That's where the real power is. When we bring every voice to the table, we find the strength that lies in unity, that unsettling force that doesn't rest until justice is served for all. I want to shout out to Post Shines for being a sponsor tonight, not just a restaurant, but a beloved institution right here in Kenton. Visit them at 8139 North Denver for the best soul food this side of the Willamette, aunties and taunties daycare services a trusted space for our community's little ones, and a door on electric that's always lighting up lives and lighting up this, this podcast. Um, thank you all for supporting us. Visit us at Celebration Tabernacle on Sunday mornings right here in Portland. And I want to do a special shout out to our production team, Dion, Andy, uh, Dion Robin, Andy, and Paul. Not one of them is bigger than the other. And guess what? They all stand tall. Let's keep the conversation going, gang. Well, I better not say gang, but family. <laughs> Share this episode. Follow us on Facebook right there and YouTube and help us spread the message far and wide. Thank you for tuning in to another segment of Conversations with Mondanay because I'm talking to you tonight. And let's keep the conversation going. One power, uh, powerful step at a time. And until next week, stay blessed, stay hopeful, and keep your light shining. Together, we are the unsettling force. And together, we can make a difference. You know, I talk about a lot about uh, knowing where you came from to know where you're going. Well, I came from the projects of St. Louis, Missouri, and I ended up into the majestic uh, mountaintops of Portland, Oregon. It's been a wonderful journey, and Lewis and Clark took that journey from St. Louis to Portland, and I took it too. It talks about who I am, and as I'm with you often in the uh, in cyberspace or on websites or on the, you know, uh, what do you call it, social media. I want you to know a little bit about me and who I am. This book talks about my fantasies, my failures, my triumphs, and more than that, it talks about the resiliency of being able to continue to go forward 
regardless of um, the odds. I'd get a copy. It's called From Maladies to Melodies. And I hope that you enjoy it and give me some feedback. God bless. Hey, it's time for you to come to Post Shine. Check out that catfish sandwich. Oh my goodness, is that the shrimp, oh boy? Man, look at that chocolate chip cake. Man, I need to get over to Post Shine's at 8139 North Denver right now because this food looks delicious. Or call, if you'd like, 503-978-9000. And don't miss it. You'll be sorry. Time's gone past We find ourselves Making excuses So that people remind that Ooh I've got to get home And tend to the brand new set. I need some time alone Can't just wait until I finish texting on my phone